I have a vibrant, gorgeous, delicious and super tasty red curry paste recipe for you today. You know I love to make things from scratch and this is just that, which means it gives us total control of the ingredients that are going into our paste. The first thing that I wanna do is dry toast my spices. So we've got some cumin seeds, some white pepper, and some coriander seeds. So this releases the oils, softens them up. While that's toasting, I can get other stuff into my food processor ready for us to create our paste. I've got a duck recipe coming up for you later in the episode. This is going to be perfect for that. So garlic straight into our food processor. Depending on how powerful your food processor is, you might need to give it a bit of a head start. So we've sort of roughly chopped our ingredients. We've got some fresh ginger there. So we've got some galangal here. Similar texture to ginger, probably a little bit more fibrous. And then we've got some shallot. So our shallot straight into our food processor. And then we have some turmeric, which adds color and a whole host of health benefits. And I'm using stevia today instead of uh, palm sugar. If you want to use a more traditional sugar, please by all means. So that's all of our, our main aromats. We also have some lemongrass. So I've got three here. So we'll cut all of them off at the bottom. So we've got our bottoms to grow new ones, our top ones for flavor, put them all aside. No waste in my market kitchen. All right, all straight into our food processor. Got this little packet of roasted belichan or shrimp paste here. I've left it to the last minute inside that packet because it is a stinky one. Stinky means funky, means flavor. <laughs> so we'll pop all of that in. Straight into there, it's pre-roasted. If you buy a brand that requires roasting, you can actually pop it straight into the, into the seeds that are toasting or you can wrap it in alfoil and roast it in the oven. We've got some kaffir lime leaves and some coriander roots. So got all of the root part, so much flavor in there, but because they are grown in the earth, they're often quite dirty. So give them a really good brush under the water. Make sure that you're sort of shaking them all which way to loosen and discard any soil because we don't want grit in our paste. And we can also utilize the stalks there. We're gonna be using all of those beautiful leaves as garnish for our curry at the end. So all of that is going straight in there. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a chop because our processor is getting full. We're gonna make it work today. I'm gonna to give that a little bit of a blitz to provide some space before we add the red of our red curry. So it's given me a little bit of a hand. I'm gonna, oh yeah, a lot more space in there now so that we can add the red components of our red curry paste. So we've got a mild, medium and hot chili option here. So we've got our bullhorn chili, which adds a lot of color and a very mild, one step above a capsicum, but nothing too hot. Our mild to medium chili, we've got some long red chilies here. I am including all of the seeds, but again, if you don't want the heat, you can de-seed these first. And then our final hotter chili, we've got some dried chilies here. I've just Soak them for a little while in some water, just to soften them, give them a bit of a head start in our food processor as well. So I'll just retrieve those, pop them straight in. We'll give it another blitz, and then I'll be ready to crush my seeds. So I've got a really rough paste there. You can sort of see in there. It still needs some work, but I wanna add my, my spices. So I've turned them off the heat to allow them to cool slightly. And then I can pop them all into our, our mortar and pestle. You can see that they're cool enough that I can touch them quite safely. All into there. Now I wanna break them up as fine as you like. I quite like a, a smooth curry paste. So we'll give them a little bit of elbow grease before we add them to our paste. So a little bit of a bash and then a little bit of a grind. So break them all up. Oh, the aroma is coming out of this bowl. Very exciting. It's going to just pair beautifully with our paste. So that's getting closer to the texture that I'm after. We can still have little hints that there were whole seeds in there, but for the most part, it's quite in powder form. So I'll add that all straight into our paste mix. Going to give it another little blitz before we start to add our liquids to loosen our paste all up. Mm -hmm. 
So we've got a lot of sweet in there, a lot of spicy, all of those different aromats. We don't have any salty in there yet, or a little bit from the Belachan, so I'm gonna season it with our fish sauce. We can add more of this or less of it to the actual curry that we're going to make later. So if you want to add a little less now, you can always season with it later. We've got some peanut oil. I'm gonna start with a little. If you have a little uh, a hole at the top, you can add it and drizzle it as you go. We're gonna have to stop and start this one. It's easier to start off with a little than try to take it out. So I always like to start with half the amount. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more. I want this a bit looser. That's come together quite well. I can still see some flecks of the different colors and ingredients in there, but because we're going to be cooking this out for our duck curry, I'm quite okay with that because all of that's gonna soften and collapse even further. Now, if you wanted to put half of this into a jar and freeze it for a day that you don't really feel like cooking, you've got a very quick recipe ready to go. If you wanted to at this point, you could toast some of it off and then mix it with activated or soaked cashews and then you've got a beautiful red curry dip so it's quite a versatile thing it's got a long life like it could last a week in the fridge but if you wanted to freeze it could last up to three months so there is our red curry paste done come back and I'll show you what to do with it